Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin from CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, and culture. I wanted to apologize to all of you who missed, who were missing my Woodblock Wednesdays. Uh, yet last week I missed uh, our appointment because uh, I was traveling, I was in California visiting some collectors who I was hoping to get on camera, but they were kind of, it turned out they were kind of shy about that. And also there wasn't a lot of time uh, to do um, sort of an interview, but I'm hoping to do that sometime soon. Uh, where I'll present collectors discussing their favorite prints or anything relating to Japanese art or history. But uh, for today, I'd like to continue the conversation uh, on Japanese prints with a comparison of two impressions by Junichiro Sakino, who was a Sosaku Hanga print artist. He, he was working in the late 30s onward. Um, and these are two impressions of a very famous portrait. It's a Kabuki actor portrait. Uh, the actor is known, his name is Nakamura Kichi Emun, and this is his portrait um, that Sakino produced in the in the late forties, and um, it's really interesting um, to discuss uh, th this comparison because these two prints are very different in in a lot of ways. So, without further ado, let's have a look at these two prints at the table. So, the first work um, I like to discuss is Sakino's very first and early states. Uh, this is basically the earliest impression. Um, there's only two, no two uh, known impressions of this uh, version. And, you know, at first blush, it looks like the, the others. This is one of Sakino's most iconic uh, portraits and so I'm sure you've seen it um, in references or online or in museums. And I mean, Sakino certainly produced a lot of them. But in this particular case, there are some nuances that I'd like to point out so that collectors and enthusiasts become aware of the differences between um, early Sakino impressions and later Sakino impressions. First of all, the easiest thing to look for for an early Sakino impression is the signature. And here you'll see that it is signed Z Sakino. It actually has the date, 1948, and that's April. And there's an early sort of rectangular seal. Now for Sakino, he only signed his earliest impressions with a Z Sakino or with a with a seal that says Zekino in block letters. And I'll show you that a little bit later. But in, 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 in further looking into this print, uh, there's other nuances that are different. For example, uh, on all impressions, you have this design by actually uh, the, the, the very first uh, portrait artist that did kabuki actors that were full length in this style. Actually, Shiraku was, was one of many, but this is a very famous uh, design by Shiraku that Sakino sort of uh, borrowed and incorporated into this uh, background. And then here, this figure and this umbrella, and then something else going on at, uh, at the left, this is only known on two impressions in the entire world. Um, and this is a cartoon or a manga from Kuniyoshi. And it's exactly how Kuniyoshi um, you know, produced it in one of his prints where the design actually illustrates several sort of characters in cartoon. And this umbrella suggests, you know, in Japan, uh, you know, it, it, you, they would do an umbrella with two names and that suggests kind of like two lovers names. Like so in, you, in the West, you have a heart with two initials. That's kind of similar. But there's, there's something lacking here, and we'll, we'll go back to that in a little bit. But this character, um, this manga character, is only known, again, on two impressions. And overall, 
the printing on this is very expressive. Uh, Sakina was a, a student of Onchi and, you know, learned quite a lot from Onchi, particularly uh, this format actually is inspired by Onchi's Hagiwara portrait uh, from before the war. And uh, this portrait was done after the war. And uh, it's very similar in format. It's sort of a close up three quarters portrait of uh, the, the, it's like a bust face with a part of the, the top there that's very sort of reminiscent of the Hagiwara portrait. But you know, I wanna zoom in and I want you to be able to, to notice the sort of a loose printing that you, you kind of see on Onchi prints, particularly the Hagiwara portrait. It's very expressive. It's looser than Sakino's later impressions, which adds kind of, you know, a, kind of an expressive, emotive quality to the, the, the print overall. So I'll zoom in so you could see. So all of the elements in this print have a really kind of soft, almost wet-like printing, uh, very reminiscent of uh, Onchi. And, uh, you know, it's very pleasing. It's a very uh, attractive, contemplative sort of portrait that captures this kabuki actor in a, in a moment of contemplation. But it, it is, you know, it's still very powerful, you know, and, and, and it's interesting because it's a, it's a real portrait. Whereas kabuki actor portraits have traditionally been done, for example, by Shiraku, where, you know, they're in costume. And here we have the actor outside of the uh, the makeup and the costume, and we have the real actor. And, and so it's interesting that uh, Sakino puts these two together uh, in, in this comparison. Perhaps Sakino is connecting uh, the lineage of kabuki actor portraits back to Shiraku. Maybe he's trying to say he's as good as Shiraku. Uh, it, it's kind of an interesting reason he... To, to put this uh, actor in the background, Sakino never really addressed the issue why he added this uh, uh, portrait, but it's interesting. And I, I certainly think he's connecting down to a lineage that goes back hundreds of years. And um, I'm not quite sure why this Kuniyoshi manga is there uh, in particular, but uh, clearly there's some other figure here that's missing. And what I think you know, which is very neat here, and it's something you'll never see anywhere else. I have a letter. This is a handwritten letter. Uh, or it's, a, it's, it's by a Sakino, and it's addressed to one of Sakino's top collectors at the time. This is a woodblock printed label, and this is a letter that Sakino wrote. It's written in pen. And it's printed in this wood block uh, here. Now the the ink looks very similar to the to the wood block printing, but it's actually an ink. And the interesting part is, it's the exact block that was used to create this manga design, but it's been cut down a little bit. So you see here, it's it it kind of ends right by the collar, whereas the design continues. Here is the umbrella. You could see that it's the same block. It even has this little line here, as is here. And then there's this cartoon next to it. Now, Sakino eliminated that, but you could kind of see the line here of this character. It's, it looks like a, a Kokeshi doll or some sort of doll um, here. And I have yet to have, have this letter translated, but it's a, it's a really interesting sort of letter, uh, work of ephemera that connects the, the very early sort of uh, block here to one of the, I mean, I, as I said, there's only two known impressions of this design known with this character. And, and this this umbrella. So we kind of get a sense of what was there before, 
how he changed it, and uh, I'll show you the the regular version of how this print ended up in a moment. But I just wanted to share that with everyone because it's really cool to have. And again, I'll show the the letter there that's woodblock printed. It's very very cool. So there is another state which I don't have to show you. And you know if you haven't. If you're a fan of Sakino and you don't have this book, I highly recommend it. I contributed an essay to this book. I have it available at my bookstore at collectingjapaneseprints.com. And, uh, you know, in, in this essay, I really describe, you know, Sakino prints early versus later and in, in a lot of the nuances. There's, there's uh, fo- photos of all... Sakinos that were printed early in his period that I had available at the time. And there's a conversation about seals and signatures. So I highly recommend uh, the, 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 the book if, if you're interested in Sakino. But back to uh, this portrait. So here, if I can angle the book so that the light doesn't affect it, you'll see the, the, the second state, which is still very early, does not have the character in the background. You see that's gone. And um, this is printed slightly differently, still very expressive, but very different. And then of course the signature is different. Here it's signed Zunichiro Sakino. So the Z part is spelled out, whereas mine, it was just Z. I'll zoom in again, Z Sakino. And This is Zunichiro Sakino. That doesn't matter. That makes both of them extraordinarily early. And then there's another added script, which is the title. So for early Sakino prints, what what you don't see is a large edition. You do not see an edition of 50, 100, 200. And really the earliest impressions like this work don't have any editions at all. That the, you don't see an edition, you don't see any of those notations. You only see editions uh, on the later printings. Now, Sakino, in his early part of his career, is known to have done editions of five, of 10, and of 20, as well as 30, 50, and so on. But the ones that are typically self printed are the non numbered edition pieces and and I really don't shouldn't call them editions because there's no numeration but those impressions that lack numeration the edition of five the edition of 10 the edition of 20 and also sometimes the edition of 30 those you could you could pretty much have confidence that Sakino printed them and with the edition of 30 you really need to carefully examine the print because there are some impressions of 30 that were then started by his studio. It just depends on the design. But the, the, the print that I want to share with you next is the regular standard edition published by Sakino's studio. This was done, this impression was done in the 50s. Um, and so on. Um, there, this impression went on to be reproduced in an edition of a hundred, and so edition of fifty uh, puts us into the nineteen fifties, early sixties, when Sakino uh, had a studio and was not printing the prints himself. And so, because of that, I want to be able to sort of, you know, share with you the the nuances. Uh, the first most obvious difference is the signature. You have this stylized signature in cursive with, uh, with a different rectangular uh, seal that is much wider here. And, of course, the addition. And notice how different that is from, from the pencil signature. Now, the, the, the later studio edition is a bit more polished. Um, and so you, you have less of a sort of expressive splatter around the image, uh, which is a, in this impression, it, it feels a little grainier, more sort of humid, more wet-like, where here the, the colors are 
better printed, if I could say that, um, in the sense that it has more of a kind of, not, not that I, it was printed by a machine, but it's more mechanical, more polished, more sort of, it, it seems like these are professional printers reproducing this image faithfully from one impression to the next. Where this impression, you know, printed by the master himself, there's nuances that are that are present only on this impression. Whereas, if you if you compare uh, fifty the, the the prints from this edition of fifty, they all look very very similar. Um, of course, they're all printed with wood blocks, and you'll find minor nuances that are different, but by and large, you're going to get the same sort of effect. So I'm going to zoom in so you could see the, the nuances of the studio printed Sakino. And of course, here's the earlier version. One of the things that might be hard to capture on camera is that uh, this work has kind of a flatter quality to how it's printed. So the, the shading in the face, uh, this, re this print in person reads a little bit more flat, where this print is done with much more subtle nuances of shading that bring this this portrait out more towards the viewer and it, it, it almost breathes quite frankly and I, I think Sakino is one of the most underrated uh, Sosaku Hanga artists um, particularly as a printer uh, his early printings that he executed himself are extraordinary. And, you know, over the course of time, I'll, I'll be happy to introduce more early Sakino printings um, to Woodblock Wednesday. But for the, our purposes today, um, to have a comparison of a very early uh, impression, which is extraordinarily rare, with a later studio impression, which is beautiful. Uh, don't get me wrong. There, there's a lot of qualities about this print that are very um, uh, fine. And it, if this is not my print uh, and will be available for sale soon, and I'd be, if it were mine, I'd be very pleased to, to own it. But to have a, a comparison where you could see the early impression by an artist who hasn't yet gone full uh, professional when he was printing these in his home sort of as a hobby versus the studio that he established to pr produce the, these this, these prints you you see the 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 nuances uh, that that are rarely captured in books and most museums aren't lucky enough to to have a, a, an early one such as this one or or a later one usually you just typically see the studio produced copies in museums and in books so when you when you're able to compare both it's a it's a, an amazing opportunity so before i end i'm going to zoom in on on everything that we've seen so that uh you're able to sort of see the elements of of each print uh, as well as the letter and, and a copy of the, uh, the book.
Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me today on Woodblock Wednesday. I apologize for the sort of the banging in the background. Someone's having some work done in my building. Uh, but anyway, it was a, a joy, a pleasure to share with you uh, these two Sikino prints. Uh, and hopefully over the years, you'll become more familiar with earlier impressions by Sikino, who's a master at uh, printmaking. And of course, look out for future additions and exhibitions to my website at collectingjapaneseprints.com. And of course, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email or in the comments section of this video. Um, I'm happy to address any uh, questions um, you might have. Thanks again for joining me. See you next week on Woodblock Wednesday.